so I explained it in my last video. I'm going to do it here again uh, Tuesday, uh, which is the day I'm recording this. You'll see this video go up on Thursday. Um, I had a lot going on, and I just... Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm recording this on Wednesday. Point is, I had a lot going on Tuesday, so I couldn't get to recording a bunch of stuff, and I ended up just doing a stream instead of, uh, you know, making my content for the XFL. Uh, so you're going to see this on Thursday. Usually, you're going to see my picks on Wednesday just because... I, uh, I ha I'm in the NFL mindset of there's a game on Thursday. We have to get everything out before Thursday, at least before Thursday night uh, for my picks. I don't like to be the guy that's just like, oh, I'm going to do my picks for just the Thursday game uh, before Thursday and then Saturday get the rest out. I'd rather just get everything out uh, in one shot. So luckily, the XFL doesn't always have Thursday games, so I can you know push this to a Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, and I can get this out. And, uh, yeah, so, again, I'm, I usually 90, 90, we'll go 90% of the time I can get this out on a Wednesday, but that 10% is going to be on a Thursday, maybe even a Friday, depending on how my week looks. Uh, but here we are on a Thursday, so let's get into it. So we have the Houston Roughnecks taking on the Guardians. This might be, uh, this might be the first 50-point team of the season. This might be that bad. Um, the Roughnecks are the best team in the league, the best offense in the league. There's nothing that can really stop them. Obviously, the Brahmas last week slowed them down, kept them under 30 points, but uh, I don't think the Guardians can keep them under 30. <laughs> Maybe not even under 40, to be honest. So, we'll see, um, but this might, this might be a really bad match. Uh, if you are a fan of the Guardians, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how <laughs> you do it. Because they're bad. They are very bad. So I'm going to keep seeing it until they start winning games. But right now, they're very bad. So I, I am so sorry for you. And uh, yeah, you're probably going to go 0-4. <laughs> so we'll see if they can even get a win. Getting a win might just be like a huge accomplishment, like a Super Bowl win or a finals win. Uh, you know, that might be what one win does to this team. <laughs> so... Then the Brahmas take on the Sea Dragons. Um, I think the Brahmas are a top four team. I think I probably would put them like right at four. Uh, they're not super, super bad. But right now they can't contend with Houston, which is number one. So I think they're kind of right in the middle. I know it's only eight teams, so it's not like a lot that it's like, oh, hey, like they're middle of the pack. Okay, well, you're middle of the pack of eight teams. Like, <laughs> big deal. It's not a lot of teams. Um, but I think that they could be contending with some of these better teams, and I think they are better than some of these, you know, not as good teams. I don't, I like, I don't trust the Sea Dragons right now. We'll see if they can really, 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 um, you know, pick up the pace and start getting up there, uh, or in terms of looking dominant and contending with those top tier teams. Because if you want a championship, that's what you're going to need to do. It's going to be very hard to do that. Uh, with this team right now, just kind of looking how they are. So I think the potential, you can be up there with the top tier teams. Right now, you're half showing it. So we'll see. I am picking them to beat the Sea Dragons. The Sea Dragons, I like, they're okay. <laughs> they're one and two. They just got to win last week um, against the Vipers, but the Vipers are a bottom four team, just like the Sea Dragons. So... I, we'll see how they do. I don't even know what to really say. We'll just see how they do. Um, you're not Guardians bad, but you're not better than Brahmas in my opinion. So Then the Renegades take on the Battle Hawks. This is, I believe, the uh, biggest crowd so far within four weeks of the XFL. Um, over 30,000. They've had to um, take sections and go. Uh, they, they usually... You know, check them off in a sense of, hey, like, we don't want people here or whatnot. They had to take that off and say, hey, we're going to, we got to put people here, put people there. Uh, there's reports of, like, all the way up to the rafters, people might be up. Well, not exactly, but, like, a lot of people want to see the Battle Hawks. So this might be a sold out uh, arena. Uh, or, I'm sorry, a sold out stadium <laughs> uh, for the Battle Hawks. Um, I think when you have something like that and you have a real home field advantage, like an NFL team, like a Kansas City Chiefs, like a Minnesota Vikings. Um, you know, when you have in a dome and you can be loud, 
Like, I think you can have an advantage. Like the Saints. The Saints can have an advantage, too, in that dome. So I think that this is, you know, going to really help them, I think. Uh, you know, it's, I'm you know, some of these players within the XFL have been to the NFL, experienced, you know, loud crowds. I think this might be the loudest of the season. Um, now, maybe if they make it to the playoffs or the championship, it might be louder. But I think, uh, well, and, and maybe even, you know, playing home again, too. But I think it's going to be the loudest stadium for uh, XFL. And uh, I think it's going to be really hard to beat them at home unless they just fall apart and do what they did last week and they just could not contend too many turnovers and whatnot. And DC just slipped away with the win. So I have them bouncing back and beating the Renegades. <coughs> oh, my God. Um, so we'll see. Um, but I, I think this is going to be – I think the crowd advantage is going to be real for this game uh, and, you know, when St. Louis is at home. So And then the Vipers take on DC. <sighs> I feel so bad for the Vipers, man. They, they were bad in the 2020 XFL, and they're bad again. Um, you know, they're playing in Seattle. That's their, you know, home uh, home field. But, obviously, they're at D.C. for this week. So, um, I, I think I have D.C. as a top three, maybe even the second best team in the league. Um, and, yeah, I think that they're just going to mop the floor with them. I, it might be a semi-close game. And, you know, we're at the point where we're early in this um, you know, this is still brand new, so maybe the Vipers can turn it around and actually beat the Defenders, and, you know, some of these bad teams that I see being bad right now can actually turn it around, um, by the time we get to the, you know, the, uh, playoffs and the championship, uh, but right now it looks like we have a couple teams that look like they're playoff and championship level, and then we have teams that look like, okay, well, maybe next year, <laughs> and the Vipers feel like next year, the defenders feel like, okay, it's their time this year. They're a contending team. So uh, we'll see what happens with the Vipers, if they can keep it close or not. But I got the defenders. So those are my picks for week four. We will see what happens this weekend. For now, like the video, share the video around, don't forget to subscribe, and I'm out of here. Peace.